Mother put up with an awful lot, of which I was not even aware, being six and seven. They'd been married, what, 15 years by that time. She put up with his drinking and his, he actually was with another woman part of that time during the war. She took all of that, but when he went after her children, that was it. And we left and packed up and went back to Iowa City. And that was, that was the end of it. It's pathetic. I told you it was gonna be like this, it's like what? It's five people in there. <laughs> it's 4.30 on a Wednesday. We got a terrible slot, it's not your fault. The only people who see movies at 4.30 on Wednesdays are shut-ins. No, because shut-ins don't go to the movies. That's why they're called shut-ins, they stay at home. I'm sorry, Nate. I'm just trying to say something to make you feel better. I've got such bad deja vu. Didn't we do this whole thing last year? Nate, you just have to keep trying. Do what you always tell me to do. Just keep shooting. Am I asking too much? No, you're not asking too much. You want to tell good stories about interesting people. You just want to expose people to another point of view, a way of life. You just want to make quiet voices be heard, and maybe change a few minds along the way. Is that what I sound like? I'm paraphrasing. Oh, sounds like a manifesto. Ooh. I have a manifesto. No, you have a need to tell good stories. We both do, that's why I always agree to help you, for free. Hillary, I swear, if I could just get one of these things picked up, I, I, I will pay you everything I owe you. That's not what I meant. You already got me a job. Oh yeah, big fucking deal. Producing crap TV, I might as well have given you herpes. <laughs> oh, it's just television. It's just, you know, it's killing both of us. It's like this kind of vampire that just sucks the soul out of your eyeballs. I think next time I'll just skip these little screenings or therapy sessions or whatever you call them. I'm sorry. I just, uh, I don't even know why I'm making such a big deal about it. It's not even a good film anyway. Don't say that, it is No, so... it's not, you know, it's not. It's only as good as your subject and Julie is, talks too slowly and there's not even a third act. It's gotta be finished someday. Not until it's ready. That is television that has put that in your head because you just have to make some air date. It should never go out until it is absolutely ready, at least until it has got a fucking third act. Yeah, why should I get trampled? Is that the Who in Cleveland here? Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Are you the filmmaker? Uh, yes, ma'am. Nathan McKinley. Oh, it, listen. It was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm really pleased. Thank you. You did a great job. I feel like I really know her. Oh, thank you. Well, she was a lot of fun to work with. Now, do you stay in touch? No, I'm afraid not, because she actually she died about six months after we finished filming. Oh, that's terrible. You know, you should have put that at the, at the back of the film, because now it just sort of ends, and I would have liked to have known that. Yeah, well, I think about that. Thank you very much. Oh, I don't know they got that. Just put it at the end. Should have shot it. How are you supposed to know? I don't know. But that was my third act. Hey. Hey, Nate. Can I go over this bear attack package with you? Henry, this show is just bad. It's just plain bad. I know that. Can we talk about this before I go home? I just, I keep trying to think of ways of making it not so bad, but it's just bad, bad, all kinds of bad. Right. Well, let's talk about the latest bad story we're going to tell about the man who videotaped his wife being attacked by a bear. <sighs> sure. The footage of the bear attack came in, and the husband's okay to do the interview on Tuesday. Is it any good? Depends on who you ask. The man's wife is being mauled by a bear, and he can't put down his video camera long enough to help her. Good for us, bad for her. I've got to make some kind of film or something. Some sort of creative hot shower after this, this awful show. Didn't we do a bear attack already? Not this one. We had Shark Attack Dad, 
Mom fights cougar to save her kids. Moose gets loose on playground. No bears yet. Well, what type of bear is it? Kodiak brown bear, I think. Okay, well, uh, track me down some sort of expert who can talk about how big its teeth are, how it's the most dangerous bear. <laughs> I will um, try and squeeze in some sort of thing about how humans are encroaching on its habitat to uh, give this thing some kind of conscience. Okay. I already have some stock footage on it. Cool. Well, if we don't have enough, we'll just use the husband's footage again. And again. And again. And then slow it down and speed it up and zoom in on it and okay. again. See you tomorrow. See you. Mr. McKinley? Hello? We, we spoke at uh, your film the other day. We talked in the lobby there. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. How can I help you? Well, I've been, um, I've been thinking about something. And I think I'd like to make a film. Or rather, I would like to have you make a film about me. About you? Yeah, I'd like you to tell my story and, and make a film like you did for that uh, nice lady in your other movie. Uh, OK, well, um... I'm Helen Axelson. Okay, Helen. Uh, well, what's the story? Because every film needs to tell a story. So. Well, I've had a full life. And there's some interesting things. Um, mostly, I'd like you to film the next week up until next Saturday. Why? What's happening on Saturday? I'm going to commit suicide. film is going to be. It's got everything, right? It's got life and death, it's got love, loss, and it has got a third act. Oh my god, does this one have a third act? Wait, why are you here so late? I told you, I know what our next film is going to be. This amazing woman, this old lady, she came to the, to the office today, we talked for like hours, she tracked me down, she found me, it's so beautiful. Anyway, she wants me to film her life story, right? But get this, it's actually her death story. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, here's the pitch. This woman, Helen, okay? She came to me, to us, mm. because she wants us to film the last week of her life. Because next Saturday, she's gonna kill herself. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Of course, we'd be idiots not to. She's just gonna go to somebody else. But she wanted me to do it. She thinks I can give her dignity. <laughs> It's great, seriously. We'll get Tony to film it. And he sorts something out for post, come up with a title. When do we start shooting? Ready? Yeah, um, how's the key light? It's good. Okay. Okay, let's get started. Helen, do you need some water or anything? Oh, no, honey, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Um, right, can you, Helen, try and remember, if you can, to speak in full sentences? And also try to uh, repeat my question and your answers, because we're not going to be actually hearing my voice on the film. We're just uh, hearing your answers to the questions. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right, let's start with your name and why we're here. Okay. Uh, to the camera? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Helen Axelson, born Helen Neubauer. And we're here making this film because at the end of the week, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Just that's great, just like that. Okay. So, Helen, can you tell me a bit about your family? Um, my parents were uh, simple, quiet people. They died when I was about 20. I really don't know that much about them, and even less about my extended family, which was always, uh, always kind of bothered me. I was married for 28 years. He died about 15 years ago. Uh, we had one daughter, Terry. She died uh, just short of five years ago from um, 
breast and ovarian cancer. I guess I've been sad ever since then. I was married late in life for the times. I was 30, Carl was 34. I can't really say that we were made for each other or anything. I, I think we filled a need in each other. But I would read a book or poem and, and not fully understand the kind of uh, love that they wrote about. When the 60s came along, I kind of got caught up in the women's movement. <laughs> I got a little wild, I guess. I would ask Carl for so many changes in our life and in our marriage, but nothing ever did change. Our, our marriage was never the same after that. We never divorced. I mean, we didn't need to. We raised a beautiful daughter, and that made it worth all the day in and day out. I, I'm not. I'm not trying for sympathy here. We had it just fine. There's a whole lot of women that had it much worse than we did. Uh, Carl never ran off with anybody, although he did have his lovers. <laughs> he provided for us. He. Um, he was a good man. He was. Um, Well, I'm just not going to say anything more about that. He was a good man. That's fine. We'll just move on. Did you enjoy being a mother? Yes, I, I, I did. But I was never really mm, comfortable with it. I, Carrie and I always seemed to have secrets from each other. Well, I kept her out of my marital problems, and she kept me out of most of her life. I always wanted to share a secret with her. The last few weeks of her life, we did get closer. But that's the way, isn't it? So, just one more for today. Um, what would you say was your happiest moment, and what was the saddest moment in your life? Oh, wow. The happiest and the saddest moments of my life. And if you can try and yeah. use the complete sentences as well. Right, okay. Well, the saddest moment of my life was back in the 50s when the Russians sent that little dog up into space on the satellite and they just left her to die there. That really got to me. Her name was Laika and there were picture in the paper. And she was so happy to be going. And they knew that she wasn't coming back. Just because they were cowards, didn't want to go themselves. I've never been able to look at a dog the same way since. It would just break my heart to go outside at night and look up and know that she was going around and around up there, just dying of starvation you know, and, and thirst. I'm not going to talk about that anymore because I'd just start crying. <laughs> uh, that really surprises me. I mean, I, I, I would have thought that maybe that you would say the death of your daughter. No, no. <sighs> no, she knew she was dying. We all had time to prepare. She wasn't uh, sad at all. She had accepted it. Well, I was a wreck. I was uh, angry at everyone. I felt sorry for her and for myself. And she was uh, very brave, if, if that's what you call it. It was, it was acceptance. There was nothing she could do about it, and uh, that's the way it was, so I pout. Not, not that she wasn't a fighter. Oh, she fought for four years. At first, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And then about a year into it, she was diagnosed with the uh, ovarian cancer. Oh, that was a blow. 
I went through the uh, usual parent thing, you know, the guilt. Why her and not me? Why did she get two cancers and I didn't get but one, you know? I just couldn't understand how a daughter could go before her mother. But for her, when it was time, it was time, and that's the way it was. You know, <clears throat> I don't believe in regrets. But if I did, I would regret not having as much acceptance as she had, I think. Yeah. And what would you say was your happiest moment? The happiest moment of my life. Oh, oh, wait. Shall you? Can I? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's follow the sketch. Here it is. Is that you? Uh, no, no, no. I took that picture, though. Can you believe that? I was only seven years old. Yeah, no, that's my parents. And this is uh, New Year's Eve. Well, the day, really. I grew up in California, so there's no snow. Oh, but I remember this picnic. We ate out, and then my parents kissed this wonderful kiss, and I just picked up my father's camera and pointed it. I can't believe it came out. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and then we went home, and we listened to Guy Lombardo on the radio. And I still remember my father called, uh, woke me up at midnight so that I could hear the clocks change. Yeah, yeah that, that was the happiest day of my life. That's, it's a great picture. Yeah, it is. Can you just can you just hold it up so that Tony oh, can get a picture? Oh, um, sure. Uh, can you bring it down a little bit? I'm getting some glitter. How's that? Okay, good. That's good right there. Okay, so we've got some more tape stock coming in tomorrow. Tony, what else do we need to make this happen? Uh, that should be it. We're shooting everything down and dirty, so don't expect any Errol Moore sliding or anything. Don't worry, look, you know, we've got no prep time for this. There's just nothing we can do about it, right? Now. There is a question of how she's going to do it. We've got to talk about it, guys. She hasn't said anything to me. Me either. So I guess uh, I'm going to have to ask her. Just know, Tony, that on Saturday I may want uh, three cameras so that we can get coverage to cut this so that we're not arrested or something, right? Is it going to be that bad? I, I, I doubt it. I mean, she's just a little old lady. She's not going to put a shotgun in her mouth, is she? <laughs> Jesus, Nate. I'm sorry. No, I, I really mean I shouldn't have... I didn't... Well, know. um, can we get her to push it back a day or two so we can have more time to set up? You know, I did think about that, but I think that that is interfering with the process. And I don't want to be the one to tell her when to kill herself. You know, I just think that that's max of liability. We have to trust to keep it as pure as possible. We are just documenting we don't affect the outcome. Isn't just our being there affecting it? Well, I mean, what do you want us to do, like have hidden cameras? You know, we have to be there, so we just don't affect how she does it or the schedule that she's already set. Is this crazy, are you even doing this? Yeah, yeah, it's completely crazy. I mean, like, we've had no time for pre-production. You know, we, we've only got five days left to shoot her. We can't reshoot anything here. This is it. I mean, we've got absolutely no post lined up. We don't even have a title. Yeah, it's completely crazy. But that's why we do it, right? Guerrilla filmmaking. Run and gun and get it done. I guess I just don't understand why she's doing it. She doesn't have a reason to want to. But that's our job to find out. That's why we're there, right? To so come on. Anything else? <sighs> Budget? We had no time to prep, so we don't really have one. Do you have money for this? I have a plan. In fact, I'm meeting tomorrow morning with some potential investors. Yeah. Yes. Just tell him. Just tell him that... Yeah. All that is fine. Just tell him that... Yes. Yes. Okay, we agree. Tell him... Yeah, tell him we're on board. 
Thank you. Sorry about that. Don't worry. Go ahead. ahead. Okay, so uh, this woman, Helen, right? She, uh, she saw one of my documentaries at a festival. Um, actually, uh, it's on the resume. We won a uh, third year in a row, honorable mention at Telluride. Anyway, uh, anyway, so she, she, uh, she came to me because she wants me to document her life. But it's not actually her life, it's her death. Because at the end of this week, she's gonna kill herself. So our film is effectively a portrait of the last week of her life. I'm sorry, I thought this was a documentary. Yes. It, it's a very intriguing story. Do we have a script on this? No, 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 no it, it is. This is a documentary. She's really doing it, we are shooting it. A woman is really gonna kill herself at the end of your film. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused. You're pitching a snuff film. No. Did you know he was pitching us a snuff no, film? No, 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 no. This is real. I mean, obviously, we're not gonna, we're not trying to make her kill. I mean, it's not. You know, excuse me. Huh? Yeah, go. Yeah, I think we're gonna pass on this. Yes. Okay. No, I. As far as I was concerned, when we left that meeting, everything was squared away. How? How? How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? Fine. You know, you can answer, dear. He's only the director when the camera's on. Thanks. <laughs> I'm doing fine, Helen. Good. Well, I may be the director, Helen, that you're running the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, let's go for it. Great. Well, I want to start today by asking you for some of your thoughts, because you obviously had some things that you wanted to say to people when you came to me to make this film. So. Tell me some things. What, what do you believe in? What, what's, what's important to you? Okay, uh, let's, let's go. One sec, I'm sorry. I just want to get a better focus on you. Well, don't get it too good, because then they'll see how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Well, here's some things I feel. Uh, I don't think people should keep birds as pets. I mean, the reason people like birds is because they can fly, and you take a bird and stuff it in a cage. I just, I don't understand that. I think it's better to <laughs> regret something you did rather than something that you didn't do. You know that. Don't let anyone tell you whether it's art or not, you know? If you like it, that's all that really matters. And everyone should be able to recite their favorite poem. Anyone lived in a little Howard town with up so floating many bells down? I used to believe in capital punishment, but now I, I don't know. Everybody ought to learn a second language, and sign language counts. They sowed their didn't and reaped their same sun, moon, stars, rain. And I can name all 50 states, 206 bones, and the nine Supreme Court justices. Metacarpals, the carpals. Radius and ulna, humerus and funny bone. Ah, scapula, there's the... And if you don't vote, you don't get to complain. Everybody ought to be able to play a musical instrument, or at least know how to sing. And there is no wrong time for dancing. I think seeing an airplane take off is so exciting. You know, there's people going to some place, people coming from. Someone on that plane is laughing and somebody else is crying. The whole thing is just going on right there for your head. An airplane probably has the highest concentration of human emotion there is. All right, one last thing. What do you think happens to us after we die? We get to rest. What are you doing? Stealing editing time. What are you doing? <sighs> Going over some questions for tomorrow. I think we need to ask why. Just point blank. I want to hear what she says. You're right. Put it down. In fact, we should ask her every day until Saturday to see if the 
Arthur changes at all, really. Watch her thought process play out. She's pretty amazing, isn't she? Yep. Pretty amazing. We've really got something here. <laughs> what do I do in my free time? Well, I enjoy puzzles a lot, you know. It's kind of a solitary hobby, but it's what I like. I never wanted to be one of those ladies that goes off and plays bingo every Wednesday night. That's pretty much it, except I like movies. I, I enjoy going to movies. All of my good friends, well, I say that even though I only have two. All of my good friends have died. Thelma died last year. Yeah, I took in her cat, Theo. She had a rather good turnout for her funeral. She had four kids and they all came from, uh, I don't know, out east someplace. It was more like a family reunion. But you know, they, they laid her out in an open coffin. I just hate that. I want to remember someone the way you know, I cared for them, not like that. I just turned around and walked out. I was with Thelma the day before she died and that's the way I wanted to remember her, not laid out like that. It's, it's not right. It's just not right. Here we are. Here's my daughter. Yeah. What's heaven like? Oh. Cloudy? <laughs> no, I, I don't believe in heaven or any religion. I, I just don't see the point to it. You see, there's no Bibles. There's no Virgin Marys anywhere. Okay, now here's what I feel. I'm probably gonna make some people angry, but who cares? If you take a, a Hindu and a Muslim and a Catholic and a Buddhist, and you ask them, what is two plus two? They'll say four because that's a simple truth. It's a common truth to all. But if you ask them who or what is God, you're going to get all different answers because there is no simple truth. Truth only has one answer. So I feel confident that I lived my life as it happened, not anticipating a, an afterlife or some great reward, you know. When I'm done, I'm done. Well, you know, wait a day and a half and you'll see. <laughs> That's great. Okay, um, I need to change batteries. You just take a second. It's okay, dear, you can laugh now. <laughs> Helen, most times with you, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Yeah, but they both feel good, don't they? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay, how's that? Okay. Now, um, uh, I'm going to ask you this question, and I'm probably going to ask it uh, a few times in the next couple of days. Okay. Why are you doing this? Why are you ending your life? Because it's time. Because it's time. She's so good. Did you think she'd have an answer for that? Yeah, I mean, I thought she'd have an answer. But like 99% of people would have given me some 10 minute tirade about blah, 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 that I had to cut it down and it could you know, never be as brilliant as this. Because it's time. Do you believe her? What do you mean? That it's really her time to go. What if she changed her mind? What if she changed her mind and wouldn't admit it because of the film? Because she didn't want to stop the film or didn't want to be embarrassed. Uh, Hilary, look, I know this is... It's hard. It's hard for me, too. You know, I, I, I like her, too. But this is what she wants. And I thought that you would want to help her get the story out to people. This is going to be a really great film. And it's going to give her dignity and it's going to make her live forever. 
And I know that sounds like bullshit, but you know, I mean it. And we have finally got a film with a third act. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, look, I asked her the question, right? Your question, I said, why? And she said, because it's time. I guess that has to be enough. It's, it's, it's simple, it's beautiful, it's uh, poetic. Holy shit, it is the name of our film. Because it's time. Oh my god, that is it. That is just, that is so it. Thank you. Because it's time. Did you know that suicide is a crime? I mean, how dumb can you get? How are you going to punish someone? <laughs> Come on. You know, I don't want people to think that I'm advocating that they should take their lives, because I'm not. It is the right decision for me, me alone, especially the youngsters. Did you know that teenagers killed themselves more than people my age? And I think that is just tragic. I mean, you want to say to them, Sure, life is hard, but it gets a lot harder. If you think you've got problems now, wait till you're an adult and the complications really set in. You know, when you're, when you're a kid, if your boyfriend leaves you, you think that it's the worst time in your life and you haven't really lived long enough to know what's really gonna be the worst time. Really, maybe I shouldn't, shouldn't make it seem like suicide is all right to do. Because it's not. It, it is okay for me, it's, and, and for someone who has a terminal illness, maybe, which I don't, thank goodness. When, um, when Terry was ill and I would sit by her bedside, I used to think that if she'd asked me to help her, I would have. I'm thankful that she never did, but if she had, I would have. This is great. This is really great. I'm sorry. I just, just want to make sure I get all this. And the microphone is just. Uh, let's see if I get that. Right. That all the sounds of life. <laughs> Garbage trucks. <laughs> um, you know what I'm thinking? Mm. What would be really great? What? Um, now that you were talking about, you know, not having any diseases or anything, yeah. would be if we could get you to get a checkup from your doctor, just to show, you know, no, no, that, no, you, no. that you're in really good shape. Why would I do that? It would be a total waste of time and money. But it would be a great scene for the film. Oh, I don't know. I don't even think you can get an appointment. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Look, just, just, just trust me, right? Okay, this would be great. You just, believe me, I am the director. Well, okay, I, I'll try. I'll I'll tell him I'm going on a long trip and I need no prescription. <laughs> great, great, that would be great. Okay, cool, let's start again, ready? Dumb. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, could you answer in complete sentences, possible, and just relax? It's just like putting off a band-aid, that's what you told me, right? Uh, what's that? I, I was saying that your, your patients they must get nervous like this. Oh, yeah, whenever the needles come out. I, uh, next time, I think I'll, I'll, ha I'll have a little more sympathy for that. This is sort of the, like that feeling, I think. Yeah. Well, you're going to do great. Yeah. So just relax. We're going to take as long as we need. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. So, how long has Helen Axelson been coming to see you? Oh, she's been coming here uh, for Dr. about. Paulson, if what? you could just say, Helen, Helen has been coming to see me. Oh, uh, um, okay, right, right. Sorry, sorry. Um, Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Helen, Helen has been uh, coming here for general physical exams for about 12 years now. Okay. How you doing, you all right? Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Here you go, Tony. Cool, let's go. Dr. Paulson? Okay, Helen, you check out once again. Nothing wrong with you. I wouldn't want myself. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Well, how are those, uh, how are the calcium and iron pills working for you? Fine, just okay. fine. Okay, okay then. See you next year. Okay. Take care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
And would you say that she was one of your best patients? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, she's one of my best patients. Yeah. She, um, Helen is one of my best patients. Yes. As, um, some women her age uh, begin to suffer from chronic arthritis and osteoporosis, but she just keeps right on going. So you would say that Helen has a completely clean bill of health? Well, uh, with my female patients, I like to say they're fit as a fiddle, and with my men, strong as an ox. So Helen's fit as a fiddle. See? That's great. Yeah? That's it. Perfect. You're done. Thank you. Well, uh, I, I, did, I did okay. You did great. Ha! <laughs> Good. Well, when do I get to see it? Okay. Here we are. Getting closer. All right, Helen, can you just tell us, um, when did you decide to do this? When did the idea come to you? Well, the idea came to me right after my daughter Terry died. But then it was just too confused with my own emotions. I was responding to my own grief. Well, those feelings began to subside, but the, um, the suicide stayed there. I read a couple of books. Oh, God, nonsense. They were for teenagers. A couple of years went by, a couple of more years. The people I felt sorry for were gone, so... Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, the people who would be upset if I were gone, they, they weren't here anymore. And so I thought, well, why not? And lo and behold, I could not answer that. I'd run out of usefulness. I. Uh, I was unnecessary. You are not unnecessary. Uh, hello? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but we're trying to make a movie here. Sorry. It's OK. I think we got it. OK, um, actually, Helen, could you just crack a few more eggs for us? No? Well, I can't eat that many. Um, uh, you don't have to eat it. It's just for the, for the film. Oh, all right. Yeah, if you could just try and get some insects sure. cooking, like, you know, the, the pan and stuff. Okay. Hey there. Can I talk to you about tomorrow? Sure. We have no shot list. We still don't know how she's going to do it. I know, I know. I, I just, I haven't asked her yet. It's, it's a bit weird. Maybe we should get her to delay for a few days. No way. We talked about this. That would be interfering with, you know, her schedule for the sake of the movie. No. I might as well go and be shooting a sitcom or something. No way. Okay, what's this about then? I don't think I can do it. What, you mean you don't think you can or you don't want to? Both. Fine. It's fine. You know, I thought this was going to be the one... I really thought this was going to be the one that was going to get us noticed, you know, that was going to get us the next film and the next one. I mean, that's why we're doing it, right? Notice that I'm saying we, because I don't know how many films it is now that I've brought you along with me. Don't try to guilt me into it. And don't act like you're doing me a favor. You've gotten free labor for the past four years. You're not this altruistic mentor who's given the little girl her big break, you know? Is this about me, or is it about the movie? Because regardless of what you think of me, please remember that the movie is the most important thing, all right? Always remember that. that that's the problem, Nate. No, it's not. Look, all right, okay, just don't even think twice about letting the movie down, letting me down. Okay, we're gonna survive, we're gonna be fine without you, right? But just think about letting her down. I'm serious, you've seen the way that she looks at you. She looks at you like you are her daughter. It's not fair, Nathan. You're an asshole. Well, think what you like about me. <laughs>
sorry. Come in, darling. Come in. Thanks. Um, I'm sorry to come by so late. Mm -hmm. Are Nate and Tony with you? No, we're not shooting anything tonight. I just wanted to come by to see how you were doing. Well, I'm fine, dear. I'm just fine. Question is, how are you doing? I'm okay. Oh. Not so okay. That's what I thought. Nate and I had a fight. Oh. Not about me, I hope. Kind of. <sighs> Helen. Hmm. Are you sure you want to do this? Absolutely sure. I'm sure. Now, I know you don't understand this. And you're just going to have to take my word for it, but I am absolutely sure. I'm trying to understand. Oh, I know you are, dear. I know you are. Thank you. It's me, Nate. Hello, hello. Come on, Hillary, pick up the phone. I know you're there. Look, okay, I'm an asshole. You're still annoyed with me about today. I'm sorry. Just please, I would really appreciate it if you call me back, okay? It's a really big day tomorrow. And um, if I don't speak to you tonight, just um, I've got to go into the office tomorrow morning, so meet me there, okay? But I would really appreciate it if you could call me back. It's, it's crucial. Tomorrow is our last day. Okay, so... Um, yeah, just call me back, okay? Bye. Bye, Nate. See you Monday. Yep, see you Monday. Oh, uh, hey, good luck with your film. I understand you're almost done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're almost done. Well, maybe you can start to do some work around here again. <laughs> cool. I heard someone stirring. Can I fix you some breakfast? What time is it? Uh, it's almost nine. Nate and uh, Tony should be here shortly. I'm sorry I fell asleep. Don't be, I insisted. What can I get for you? Um, just some coffee would be great. That I can do. I'll get it. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Nice to hear you. Thought I was late. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. Can I get you some coffee? That'd be great. Thanks. Thank you. Big day today, you know. Big day. It's not like I want to live forever. I mean, who really wants to live forever? I think people are afraid of dying when they feel that they, they, have, they aren't finished yet, you know, that they're incomplete. And I know that just must be a terrible feeling. But I feel complete. I've cared for people, and they've cared for me. Oh, and I want to thank you for helping me with this. We have been so nice. And I want to thank you uh, for making a story of, that I want to tell. I just hope you can find some people who want to hear it. I'm sorry for the wait, Helen. Nate should be here soon. Well, why don't we start without him? You can do the interview. Oh, no. We should wait for him. He won't be long. But don't you have the questions? Um, yeah. Well, then you ask them. Come on, you can do it. Thanks for the vote of confidence. But Nate will be here any minute, and then we can get started. Oh, dear. We've, we've already started. What do you mean? Well, I took the pills while you were sleeping. We started whether Nate's here or not. Hill, um, 
Can I talk to you for a second? I can't do this. What do you mean? I can't shoot this. I quit. This is too much for me. Tony, please. This is hard enough for me as it is. I'm sorry, Hill, but can I sit there and watch that woman die through my lens? I'm just not going to do it. Keep the camera for today. I'll uh, pick it up at the office tomorrow, but there's no way I can sit there and watch that. I can't. said pretty much everything I want to say right here. And you ask things I never even thought to say. People leave suicide notes because they want to explain themselves or because they want to blame someone and make them feel guilty, you know, and that is so selfish. Well, suicide is selfish. Yeah, I know that. But sometimes Selfish is not bad. I'm doing something for myself. And why not? It's about time. And if we weren't making this film, would you leave a note then? No. No, like I said, I'm no need to explain myself. I'm comfortable with my decision, and that's all that matters. Okay, so here it is the last day. You've already taken your pills. I'll ask you again why and has your reason changed at all? No, my reasons haven't changed, no. I hope someday that you know what this feels like. Well, not necessarily to kill yourself, but to know just when your time is done. Everyone dies. You would be so lucky to know just exactly when. Helen, thank you. Ah, oh, no, sweetie. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. You gotta stop now. Um, yeah, no, I'm sorry, I, I, this isn't right. I mean, I, I'm, it's, no, listen, seriously, I've been thinking about this, it's completely wrong. No, I'm serious. You're too I'm, late. No, 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 listen, listen, we can't do this. You're too late. Call an ambulance. Call an ambulance now. Oh, no. This is what she wants. Call an ambulance. Fucking call an ambulance, where's the phone? What is it, what is it, the fucking film? Don't worry about this. Just the problem. Just the fucking thing. Fuck this, fuck the film. We should fucking never have the three to do it. Don't say that. Fuck it. Fuck it. Listen, it's my fault. No, it's nobody's fault whether you were here or not here. For the first time in my life, I'm doing something just for me. All on my own. I lost control of my life a long time ago. I got it back. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Very happy.
just a body in a room and love do what you want Do what you want.